Peace, y'all. Welcome back to the Law Life Academy YouTube channel, where we provide information for you to make an informed decision. That is our sole purpose and our sole objective. Um, so we want to thank you all for tuning in. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell um, so that you can get all the um, alerts when we provide new information or we put out new videos. All right. Um, with that being said, happy new year to everyone, a happy fiscal new year to everyone. Uh, we hope that, you know, these core, um, communications find you all doing well. Uh, we wishing you and yours the very best in the upcoming, uh, fiscal year. All right. So, uh, as always, this information is for educational purposes only. We assume no liability. All right. You use this information as you see fit. That's what we mean by making an informed decision. All right. So with that being said, I want to thank everyone that has subscribed, that has participated in providing comments. We try to keep up with y'all sometimes. Um, you know, it's a little bit challenging, but nonetheless, I see that we have some new feedback. Um, I I guess we've gotten a lot of feedback about the uh, BC stuff. Um, you know, I think people are a little bit perplexed as to why we are you know, one of the few peoples, if there are anyone else out there saying not to authenticate the BC, right? Um, we're going to get into some of that today. Um, but before I do that, what I want to do is just take a step back and just talk about uh, some of the personal experiences. 2014, uh, got into this information about authentication, learned that from Jonah Bay, went out and did it, um, you know, and I had my experiences with that, right? Not to sit here and say, you know, it went left or it went right, but, you know, I did those things. Um, several years passed and, uh, I'm listening to a show that, uh, Jonah was doing and, um, you know, he, he, he brought up something about reading all the laws on the, uh, the actual birth certificate. And I just thought to myself, man, I never went and did that, you know, so I kicked myself and I went and did it. And I kept seeing a recurring theme, you know, the recurring theme, um, is a complete throw off for a lot of people. But the recurring theme that I was seeing was, you know, um, seal and signature, um, you know, or we are uh, authenticating someone's office. But what I realized was they weren't authenticating the information that was attached to the BC, you know, um, and I found that to be a little bit perplexing. So at the end of the day, you know, they're authenticating their officers or their registrar personnel or uh, foreign official office or personnel, you know, um, but never the information that, you know, we're presenting to them. Then I've used those things in court case cases. And again, you know, the ramifications of not knowing any better, right? So we pay to learn. So one of the things that I realized was it had no effect because at the end of the day, we authenticated these things for a particular place. Now, I know people get a little choked up, you know, because they say, oh man, Taiwan this or, you know, Jamaica that or whatever the case may be. But that's what it is, right? It has no effect unless you use it in that country. It's simple, right? So um, what we wanted to do, um, you know, in terms of just sharing some of the experiences, let y'all know, like, I've been through some of the same experiences that a lot of you all have um, are currently going through or have gone through, right? Um, and we're not here to, to take slight at anybody. If we wanted to do that, we could have just came out and and did that, to be honest with you. You know, we, 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 we don't want to create that type of energy or synergy. So we just want to stay away from some of that stuff, right? Um, to be honest, the only reason why I'm sharing this information the way that we're sharing it or the re reason why we're sharing it is because a lot of us have been um, so-called, you know, burnt by this experience, but rather than giving up, we're just trying to discover truth. So, um, we continue to do the research and the legwork. And when we find things, we share them, you know, um, not in the fashion everyone wants us to, but we do it nonetheless to encourage you along. So here's one of those things that people are just, you know, completely a little bit, um, confused by, but without further, further ado, let's just jump right into it. Um, you know, um, I'll start there because of the, experience with authentication. I want y'all to know, you know, that was done 2014. I still have those records. They're just, again, you know, from my perspective, not beneficial in any capacity in the U.S., all right? So let's get into what we really need to do is how we perceive it. So um, I talked about this, so I'm not going to go into the subscribe subscribers and their comments, but I appreciate the feedback. Um, 
so we're going to talk a little bit about the birth certificates, though. So one of the things I, I, I mentioned earlier is the fact that when you authenticate, you know, they tell you that they're not liable for anything that is associated with that document. They give you all the laws um, and then we run with it. Right. So what we have now is we have a, an authenticated evidence or an authenticated record. Right. Because that's all it is. So on the document, it says full faith and credit. And this is one of the biggest misconceptions. So we're going to tackle that right now, because if you just couple the information, all these videos, if you just stream them together, you'll see everything. But the first one where we read everything off the certificate, that's what I'm referring to now. So I'm just going to talk about what's on the thing. So let me minimize that. And then Investopedia is doing some crazy stuff. So most of, more often than not, people will send me stuff like this, full faith and credit right here, right? Uh, full faith and credit is the phrase used to describe one entity's unconditional guarantee for a commitment to back the interest and principle of another entity's debt, right? So this is where they come. They say, you know, government's supposed to pay for everything. That's your debt, right? All right, got it. What they're speaking to on their uh, certificate is this clause right here. Article, uh, what's that? Four, section one. And it says, full faith and credit shall be given in each state to the public acts, pay attention, to the public records, pay attention, and to the public judicial proceedings of every other state. What is so difficult for us to understand here? Right? What's so difficult? The Congress may by general law prescribe the manner in which such acts, records, and proceedings shall be proved and the effect thereof. Now, somebody's going to go into a whole breakdown here. I'm not going to read that, right? If you don't want to go look at that, you can look at that. But this is a breakdown of what they mean by putting full faith and credit on your document. They have certified that this document is genuine and on alter right so we're going to see some of that right so just pay attention all right so i kind of want to take a break from getting into this stuff so i'm hoping that whatever we do today will you know give you all some things to chew on for a little bit and then allow us to you know pursue some other things that we want to share with y'all all right so just pay attention to this stuff continue with the feedback you know uh, depending on what we see we'll, we'll we'll you know address some of those things but they keep telling you the public acts every other state such as other state statutes. Yeah, they, they're telling you, but that's not the end of it. All right. So what what, what we like to think um, that makes us unique at, at Law Life Academy is the fact that when we're problem solving, we try to go to the root of the issue. And the root of the issue has always been um, the birth certificate, right? So we wanted to make sure we provided some in-depth understanding of what that is and you know how that even affects us in today. So I'm going to take uh, a little bit of time to just go through. I'm not going to read these things, but I'm going to go through a couple of things and I want to get to, to a, a video. I want to play for y'all briefly. And then I want to talk about some of that, but before I get into it, you've got to understand where this all came from and how we got here. So let me see if I can get to some of these things. Uh, I thought I had a select way of just going through it, but probably not. All right. Um, I'm going to just have to do it this way. All right. So what are the governing bodies, if you will, or how do they enforce this whole birth certificate registration? Everyone, anyone ever thought about it? We're all familiar with Minnesota Rule 220, but no one else brings any type of information regarding birth certificates outside of that, right? Nothing, nothing whatsoever. Everyone runs with Minnesota 220. All right. So here we have one of the agencies that was responsible for your current predicament, right? So you can do some research on this particular entity here, right? So I put it up so y'all can see it, right? And it tells you there shall be established under this department, see that? This department, a bureau, and they tell you what you need to know. All right, so boom. So that's one. Second one that I want y'all to pay attention to is this one here, right? And I'll bring this down so y'all can see it. But this one here that took place in this year, it says, on this date, President so-and-so signed this law, right? 
And part of it was you had this representative from this state who originally brought this up in this year, right? Because they lobbied for this particular group of people, right? Now, in a year later, this particular senator from this state, right, who was big on this issue, and another representative from this state, right, became the main sponsors of this law. Now, you know, before a law, you know, becomes a law, it, it starts out as this, right? So to combat elevated mortality rates among mothers and newborns, this law provided $1 million annually in federal aid for a five-year period, pay attention, to state programs for mothers and babies particularly prenatal and newborn care facilities in rural states. Now, it goes on a little bit. Uh, with former representative sitting in the House gallery, the bill was debated for 12 hours. And this is the vote on that day, right? So here's what happened. Several months earlier, the Senate had approved it by a similar wide margin. So it was already approved. So ironically, the one woman serving in Congress at the time, the one woman serving in Congress at the time, right, voted against this and dismissed it as a harmful bill. Pay attention. Y'all got to know some of this stuff. So do some research, dig into this, and you will see um, a lot more information pop, pop up. So what's the third law that they did, that they uh, came up with, you know, and pay attention to the time, right? So first we had this one, which they don't tell you the year, but you can see 19, um, 1912, right? Then they came up with this one, 1921. And then they came up with this one, which most of y'all already know right here, right? So I'm not going to go into any of this. Y'all can just go into it. The main ones I want y'all to pay attention to is this right here. This is the issue, right? So it starts from here. So just go into it, read through it, and you will be able to make some informed decisions for yourself. All right. So that's for first and foremost. All right. With that being said, what it doesn't do is it doesn't provide any clarity for us as to what an actual birth certificate is or why we even need one. So in researching, this is what um, we've discovered, right? According to them, whenever someone needs to prove their age, or other um, information that pertains to someone's birth, right? Then it becomes necessary to prove what they consider to be these birth record to another individual or agency. So whenever you got to do that, there's a number of steps you have to take. The first step they want you to take is to contact the appropriate office in the state where you were born, all right? Or where the actual record was filed, right? Pay attention. We're talking about records. Right? This is the first thing they want you to do. Most of y'all, if you don't, if you can't get it back from your state, I know you call vital statistic probably from DC, or I think most of the states have a vital statistic. You can tell I'm not, you know, I never went through that experience because again, I don't have that BC. All right. So, um, but you call vital statistics, I believe it's at your state, and then you get it, or at your county if if the county gives it out at the county um office, right? If it is a properly certified copy of the record. Right. Um, I'm sorry, if it is if it is a properly certified copy of this record, it would normally be all the proof that is necessary. That's what it becomes. So you don't have to go authenticate anything because it's already coming from the original office, so to speak, or the original record holder, so to speak. And they're sending it to you. So it doesn't need any additional stamping or altering, right? So those persons not having a birth record on file should take the statement from the state of their birth or, or their born state, indicating there is no record on file, and ask the person or agency requesting the information what other documents would be acceptable, so pay attention. And this is what I want y'all to get to. Y'all are making this more complicated than it needs to be. And we are working on putting together 
an actual webinar where we can provide you all with all the resources and all the information for those that want to see or need additional help or want an additional um, um, uh, insight, I guess, right? You all can take advantage of that. But we haven't put it together yet, so it's something that we're going to work on, right? Um, but this is what I want y'all to understand. The documents that are acceptable, right? If you don't have a birth certificate, right? Typically includes one of these things. And we don't use majority of these things anymore, but typically would include a baptismal or church record. That's first and foremost on the list, right? You can use an early school record. They'll accept a military record. They'll even take a hospital or physician record, right? And we always know Anytime you want to show proof of anything, it's in the form of an affidavit. We teach affirmation, but that's what it is, right? So you can also submit an affirmation. So for many individuals, you know, it may be advantageous to go get, this is what they want you to think, a delayed birth certificate because it's going to be necessary, they feel like, whenever you need to prove something. Now, wait, I just gave you several other options that you could maximize. And one of those out of all of those things is private, aside from the aff affirmation, right? So if you needed to prove that you're alive, like most of you all are struggling with, you do that in the form of an affidavit. So let me go into it a little bit more because I want y'all to have a better understanding, right? So your birth, you, you know, look, y'all put, put us to this task to get into this stuff. And before I get into what I want to um, read to y'all right now or what I want to share to y'all right now, because I had to take down notes, man, right? I want y'all to hear something for y'all self, right? Right here. Let's play this guy. <laughs> Thank you, Pete. That's Pete Pond in the background with the whole truth. We're going to try to squeeze in another number before we get out of here, maybe late in the show tonight. My next guest is one of the country's most famous and dynamic trial lawyers. In fact... Uh, he has a distinguished legal career, and those of you who are familiar with the uh, television show that was on for some seasons, Sam Benedict, was based uh, on a good part uh, on his career. He's written a new book called A Reasonable Doubt, in which he uh, states his definite opinions, speaks out rather boldly and provocatively on a, on a whole number of subjects, from the narcotics addict to censorship to the Fifth Amendment to, to divorce and etc. He's an extremely interesting man. Would you welcome, please, Mr. Jake Ehrlich. Good evening, Counselor. Good evening. I always hear that they say that on television all the time. <laughs> no, the Sam Benedict show, they don't. They don't say that. Why do they always say it in those other series? Counselor all the time. Well, do I... Lawyers talk to each other that way? No. <laughs> you ought to hear lawyers talk to each other. <laughs> <laughs> this is a most fascinating book. As I mentioned to you briefly in the, in the little time we had to say hello before the program, uh, I get probably 30 or 40 books a month from people who appear on the show, and most of them you don't have a chance to to really look through, you look some of the highlights. And I set up the last two nights with this book and uh, called A Reasonable Doubt and got so fascinated. I guess the lay people who don't know much about the workings of the law, this, this is all fascinating. I'm what, glad what you, you like it, What John. you do. Most interesting. One statement you had in here, it says, when you, when you um, are defending somebody, you say the first thing that you tell them is never plead guilty. Never plead guilty. Every man's entitled to a trial. He's presumed uh, to be innocent until the contrary is proved to a moral certainty beyond a reasonable doubt. And that's his right under the law, and he ought to avail himself of that right. So never... Never plead never guilty. Never plead I, guilty. Let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. What is your name? What is your name? Notice that he's asking a simple question. And I paused it here because a lot of y'all cannot answer this. Right, and this pertains to the BC. So listen and pay attention. I'm not going to be too much longer. All right, you all can check out the rest of the video. Everything is here for you to be able to see and capture, so you can watch it at your leisure. I refuse to answer. No, <laughs> uh, my name is uh, Johnny Carson. 
Uh, how do you know that to uh, be your name? Well, I saw on a birth certificate. Legally. Listen. Well, it's on a birth certificate. That's everybody. That's everybody. Listen to this lawyer's response. That's your say. That's hearsay? Well, of course. Well, I mean, if it's legally recorded, that's still hearsay. You hear what? Y'all are fighting over authenticating hearsay. Y'all are trying to use an instrument of writing in the wrong light. What do I mean by that? Majority of y'all are trying to prove a live event that took place with that document. Hearsay. Let's listen to some more. Suppose uh, you were born, and I must assume that you were born because you're here tonight with us. Uh, uh, there's a certificate made out not by you, a certificate made out by somebody else. <laughs> it's so logical. So logical. I might not even get into the other stuff after this because I haven't watched this in a little bit. So I, I didn't remember that he broke it down this vividly. You didn't, you know, one of the things people should always remember, you really should practice not signing contracts that you didn't draft. That's first and foremost, right? That paper has a name, that paper. And when you call that name, that paper cannot answer. You were misled to even assume that's your name. Pay attention, man. That a boy child was born to Mr. and Mrs. Carson, and that he was named Johnny. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that you know that to be the fact. That means you have read that to be the fact. Okay. Yeah, I see what you mean. In other words, I only have to go by what is, is recorded. You're, you're pleading guilty to something that you don't know of your own knowledge. <laughs> In other words, I should have said, I, uh, if somebody asked me who I am, I say I plead not guilty. Right? No. <laughs> it doesn't go quite no, that, that far. Not that plead far. not guilty. I see what you mean. That is hearsay. I'm, I'm hearsay. only accepting what somebody you're, has what said. What somebody else has said. So but that would be legal. I mean, if you come in with a birth certificate, that proves you're more. Well, it's birth certificates are legal until they're attacked and proved to be invalid. That has happened, too. I guess I... I don't even want to say nothing. I feel like he just said everything. They are valid until they are attacked and proved to be invalid. Let me tell y'all something. A hundred years ago, they did all of this. They came up with registration camps and they instituted these, uh, on the federal level, they instituted these um, um, registrations of these documents, right? Vaccinations was an issue back then. Like, War was an issue back then. So if you're checking all the boxes, hmm, I got a surprise for you. I'll share that later. But y'all need to pay attention. All I'm saying is if this if this attorney from however long ago this show was can simply sit there and let y'all know openly in this public setting that what y'all are, are striving to prove, you can't prove. What I'm telling you is that thing represents a claim. That's all that it is. And what is the claim? The claim of ownership. And I'm going to prove that to y'all. See, this is my biggest issue. I don't want to sit here putting all this hard work and just come and blast y'all with information that y'all won't appreciate. So for all those that are focused, this is what we want to do. Um, I'm going to set up a different email. Right, let me do that first before I give it out. And I'll try to attach it on the back end to this thing here. And what we're going to do only for our subscribers. If you're not subscribing, you can't show proof that you're subscribed. You can't participate in this event. But in only for our subscribers, I will show you all what no one has shown you. And I'll show you what I don't want to show in the public. And these are all the laws. So you can be, you know, engulfed in all the information. Now, when you start to see the information circulating, you know where it started from, right? But we're trying to make sure we do our part to help move this information forward. All right. That being said, you heard it from the horse's mouth and he told you exactly what it is. So this is what I want to do. <clears throat>
let's get into because y'all like codes. Let's get into a code real quick and let's see what the code has to say. So y'all can look this up. It's right there. And we're going to go into this section here, definition. And right here, it says it right here. Right. Now, what do they say this damn thing means? They say birth certificate means the record. The record. The record. Huh. Record. And what is that record? It is a record related to a birth that is permanently. See this word? See this word? Permanent. Stored either electronically or physically at the state office of vital statistics. And I was right. Y'all call the state office of vital statistics. Or equivalent agency in a registrant's state of birth. Mm. I can't make this up. They're telling you. Right here. Birth certificate. Now, look at this. They got this. Now, replace this word, right? This word right here with authenticate. Uh, authenticate. Authenticated, right? Authenticated copy of a birth certificate. This is what y'all are doing right here. What does it mean? It means a copy of the whole or part of a birth certificate registered with the state that the state considers to be the same as the original birth certificate on file with the state office of vital statistic or equivalent agency with a registered state of birth. So now somebody will say, oh, but it tells you right there it's the original. And when you authenticate, you get the same as the original. Well, no, they didn't say that. They said when you certify. They didn't say authenticate. Right? That's first and foremost. Right? Now, y'all are confused yet again. Because you don't know what they mean by the words that they use. So these are the last two definitions I'm going to probably give you all and I'm going to get out of here. So watch this. First, y'all need to read this whole thing here about records, right? Now, now we're talking about evidence, a written memorial. Go read Minnesota Rule 220. It tells you about memorials, right? Records may be divided, right? The courts of common law, the courts of chancery, right? Legislative acts, they go through it. But right up here, it tells you. To put a document into the official records, right here, county recorder of deeds. Of deeds. Now, what kind of stuff can you put there? Normally recorded is any document affecting title. Wait, people don't know what title is. So let's click on title. Title. A comprehensive term referring to the legal basis of the ownership of property. Hmm. Hmm. We want to be the owner of the property because God forbid I tell you that you are not the name. But the attorney just said it. That's hearsay. That can't never be you. And for those of y'all that have kids, you want to come and check out this this free webinar that we'll do for y'all. If you have kids that are 17, about to be 18, come over to Law Life when we put this thing together and I'll show you how to take your kids out of the system. They got to play by the rules, but they can be private. A hundred percent. They don't have to follow in your footsteps. A hundred percent. Now, who's showing you all these things? We're talking about remedy. Remedy. Now, let me continue. What does the ownership of property encompass? Real and personal property. You see how they got that bolded? That BC, personal property. What is it? Personal property, right? Intangible, intangible interest therein. Also, a document serving as evidence of ownership of the property, such as certificate of title. What am I saying? That's wrong. Why do I got to keep going over this stuff? That's all good, though. That's all good. In the law of property, title in its broadest sense refers to 
all rights that can be secured. I'm a secure party. All rights that can be secured and enjoyed under the law. It is frequently synonymous with absolute ownership. But how do you get that? How do you get that? Ooh. I talk about estate. They tell you right here, estate and visa. You know what? Let me stop. In any instance, uh, let me go back and make sure I, I covered what I wanted to. But they told y'all, right? Y'all don't stop at property. Y'all don't know, right? Deed of trust. When you do this, not a hand there. I already said all this stuff. And it's not a hand under there. Um, liens, <laughs> notice of default. But the main thing they want you to know is that these recordings provide a traceable chain of title to the property. What am I trying to tell y'all to do? Let me do it again since y'all don't get it. Grab your birth certificate. Go figure out how to claim that title. It's done through an affirmation or an affidavit. Or I got some more shit for y'all, but that's not the hearing idea. And I slipped. My apologies. Now, separate from that, we have it up on our website. Our website is on the construction, so you might not be able to just go and click right now, but we'll be up shortly, right? But we have the affirmation that you need. Now, if you understand what this is, you're going to take the BC, take that affirmation, and you're going to go and you're going to create the first proof of ownership. You're going to be the first, the chain of title is going to start with you. And when you create that chain of title, you're going to give the public constructive notice of all your interest in the property. That's where you get to slap them with fee schedules and all this stuff, right? Because, you know, you violate my thumb, you got to pay me, right? 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 What is this telling you right here? So let me leave that alone for a second. Let me jump to a little bit more. So a certificate is a document signifying the satisfaction of certain requirements of terms and conditions or testifying to certain facts. The holding of a certificate grants the holder those rights granted by the issuer of the certificate. Laws exist on all levels regulating the issuance and use of certificates. Right. And then they give you some examples. Certificates are used in a variety of contexts and have different meanings and legal significance attached to them. A certificate made by a document testifying to, to the truth of something such as a birth certificate. A certificate may be a document issued to a person competing, completing a course of study. That's diploma stuff. In, in yet another context, a certificate may prove ownership of property. So now y'all say, well, if I authenticate it, I show proof that I have evidence of owning this property. But, but here's the problem. You still got to put it on the record. Wait, put it on the record. Wait, put it on the record. All right, try putting your authenticated birth certificate on the record. Let me know how that goes. All right, so pause for a second. Oh, we can put copies. Sure, go for it. All right, certificate. This is what I wanted to show y'all. A written document that is official it is official verification that a condition or requirement has or has not been met, right? So watch this. A written assur assurance issued from a court that is notification to another officer, judge, or court of procedures practiced therein. I'm going to come back to that one second. A document such as a birth certificate prepared by an official during the course of his or her regular duties and which may be used as evidence for certain purposes. <laughs> oh, let me authenticate that. Let me authenticate this evidence. All right. A document certifying that one has fulfilled certain requirements, right? A stock certificate in a paper presenting a share of stock in a corporation that has been purchased by its holder, right? And so on and so forth. But I want to go back to this because I go over it and y'all just like, oh man, what does that mean? All right, let me just click on it. So assurance, y'all don't know. Common law, insurance, right? Assurance, conveyancing, pay attention. This is a common assurance, but the term assurance includes in a enlarged sense, 
all instruments which depose of property. Now, gosh darn it. How can you depose a property if you don't own it in the first place? Oh, I authenticated. I can depose. You got to prove that you are the owner. And the sad part is the law gives you exactly what to write. All right. Whether they be grants of private persons <laughs> or not, such are fines and recoveries and private acts of the legislature. How did how the legislature supposed to have private acts? But they do. Go figure. But that's what assurance are, right? Largest sense, all instruments which depose a property. Y'all deposing a property? All right. You come down here. There's more to it. Um, certificate. Uh, this is what y'all like. A writing made in any court and properly authenticated. Remember we said certif certified means authenticated or vice versa? That's what it means. So what are they going to say now? Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. To give notice to a... Wait, wait. They're not saying full faith and credit. Is that what they're about to tell us? To give notice to another court of anything done therein. Hmm. That sounds like full faith and credit. But wait... Or it is a writing by which an officer or other person bears testimony that a fact has or has not taken place. But wait a minute. Authenticated. Give me this. No report. There are two kinds of certificates. Pay attention. Those required by law. Those which are merely voluntary. Pay attention. I'm going to slow down and I'm going to digress right there because I don't want to go any further. I think I captured everything I wanted to, um, at least on here. Now, one thing I will end with is this. In, in doing this research, because I don't go through these challenges like some of y'all go through, right? But one of the challenges is like, I don't think anyone can ever explain to me what that live birth actually is. So I went and found it. So here's what the, 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 the live birth is. It is um, <laughs> what they use for the first year to establish that the birth actually occurred. That's why they have a live birth. After the first year, you get a birth certificate. Go figure. All right. So on that note, I'm going to stop right there. We're going to take a break from going over this topic. If y'all don't take advantage of the upcoming um, free uh, I guess you can say Q&A that we'll offer. I I'm going to do a live um, as well, but I want to do something private for our subscribers just for thanking you all for taking the time to subscribe and actually watching these things and actually providing um, feedback. You know, we want y'all to have an open mind. We expect that y'all are going to take the time to review this information. I know this is a lot. I have the show coming up shortly. It's 540 something my time and um, I'm doing a show at seven um, on blog talk. So y'all should check that out too. But I wanted to make sure we did something that went in a little bit further. But no matter what y'all do, no matter how you perceive it, I'm trying to help y'all. Right. At the end of the day, we want the same thing. I'm trying to get you all to look at things that may not have been presented before so that y'all can make an informed decision. So with that being said, please don't forget to, to make sure you like, share, subscribe, um, um, hit the notification bell. Make sure that you take advantage of our upcoming um uh, free live, uh, not live, free webinar that we're extending to our, our subscribers. So if you know people that, you know, might need this information, encourage them to subscribe, you know, so by the time we put it out, if they're not subscribed the day we put it out, which I can tell, um, you know, we won't let them in because we don't want no bandwagon jumpers or anybody trying to just come in and take information to go, uh, you know, make a profit. So just come on in and, uh, let's talk about some of this stuff. We hope that Again, your fiscal year is off to a great start. If y'all need anything, y'all know where to find us. Uh, peace, y'all. Catch y'all next time.